Now, for the signs and wonders of the prophet. This is very important. And, and I could talk more about the apostle, but God really started putting on my heart that you, it's time for you to know things about the prophet so that you can, can, um, can, can increase when a prophet is around or when the, pro, uh, when the prophetic ministry start operating. Now, y'all ready for this? So <clears throat> I want you to write down the 10 major manifestations of the prophet's ministry. 10 major manifestations of the prophet's ministry. And what I'm about to share with you is going to change your life the way you receive the prophetic ministry. Amen. When y'all see the prophetic mantle come on me, and y'all know that's very rare sometimes here in Taylor. I operate more in the prophetic mantle outside of this room, outside of this place than here. I operate more as an apostle here, more of a prophet when I'm on the road and an evangelist and a healing evangelist here. But when that rare times it comes, you, you understand how to pull on that. Amen. Or any other prophets we bring. That's how I'm telling you the word of the prophet establishes you. Amen. When, when the whole world turn against you, you know, when God give you a word like that, ain't nothing nobody can say. So you understand when, when, when people come against me, that's why I'm so bold because I didn't got so many words. I'm solid. I'm sure. I don't care if the whole world tell me I'm not <laughs> that I hadn't seen Jesus. I'm going to tell them all they're a bold faced lie. I'll stand in front of all of them and say it. Not only because I know it happened, I know this man didn't know me from Adam. He knew nothing about me. He called my name. Told me what was going on in my life. I know, it established me. From that time forward, I knew it, it, don't, it don't matter what nobody say. Amen. Say this with me. The voice of the prophet and the apostle establishes you. That's right. They establish you. That's why when you're around true apostolic or prophetic ministry, they give you establishing words. Establishing words. You say, what, what do you mean by that? Like, for instance, you know, if an evangelist come to, and you have a, your pastor, you have a church, and an evangelist come to your church, they will probably preach on witnessing and going out and that kind of thing and helping church growth. But when a prophet come in, he'll start preaching about what's in the house and what's out of order and what needs to change. Amen. Like if the pastor being attacked by an assistant pastor and that, that, that assistant is gaining more rank among the people and he's about to split the church, the prophet will come in and bust all that up or the apostle will come in and, and shatter that stuff. They teach about foundational things that keep you solid. Do that make sense? Because people, I've noticed, they're fickled. When you don't mature, you're fickle. All you do is follow whoever is in front of you. Whoever looked the most anointed for the moment or the powerful, they just sway with that. You got to be established in the leader God put you under. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Those are called established words. And those ministries deal with stuff like that. Amen? Are you hearing this? So uh, going, going back to what I want to show with you now, the, the, the 10 major manifestations of the prophet's ministry. Now I'm going to start with a revelation that the Lord gave me. And uh, this is one of the most important things you can ever realize about the prophet's ministry. And this is when I was, I was basically doing um, prophetic conferences down in Jacksonville, Florida, with uh, e Esther Washington, who's a Ethel Washington, who was a wonderful woman of God. She's passed now. And me and her came together to do a prophetic conference in Jacksonville every year for about five to seven years, something like that. And I knew it was time. God was saying, you need, to, you need to do prophetic conferences and teach on prophets. And so there are seasons where God will, like he's doing now, he'll, he'll have me start doing prophetic conferences and things and teach on that. So me and her agreed to do that because God told us both to do it. And I'll never forget, the Lord told me one year, he says, you have not understood this about yourself and you have not understood this about the prophetic office as a prophet. And uh, he started saying to me, he says, prophets have a prayer ministry. You say, now, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, let me explain it. Don't, don't take it like the 21st century, because if you look at it like that, you're going to miss the whole signs and wonders. To, to, today, I'm giving you the, the 10 top signs and wonders and supernatural manifestations of the prophet's office. 
Write it like that. I didn't tell you to write it like that at first, but this is what you're going to do, right? Because that's better, isn't it? The ten top signs and wonders and manifestations of the prophetic office. So if you understand who they are and you understand the validity of what they do, then it is major. you got to understand it. So I'll never forget, uh, before the conference, I went to sleep and God spoke to me in a dream. As a prophet, he speaks to me in dreams. As apostle, he comes to me face to face. But as a prophet, he comes to me a lot in dreams. And then when I wake up as a prophet, he speaks to my spirit by revelation, by the Holy Ghost. So I go to sleep and the Lord gives me a dream. And in this dream, I remember I was standing in front of a major leader. Actually, it was, it was Carton Pearson. I was standing in front of him. He was sitting in the seat. And the question came in the dream to him. Before you became very big and massive, the, the voice said to him, how did you get there? Now, this is amazing. I don't, didn't really want to use his name, but you, you will know uh, he did a lot with Azusa and just some wonderful things. I still love Carden Pearson to this day. Amen. No matter what happened and what is wrong, I still pray for him. Amen. And I love him. But when he was in the zone with God, he did a lot of great things for the body of Christ. But after all those things happened, God came to me in a dream about him. And, and in the, the voice, and I was standing in front of him, but a voice came and said, how did you get as big as you got? How, how did you get massive like that? Filling arenas and drawing the whole body of Christ. We're talking about 30, sometimes 40,000 people or service all over the world. And then he started mentioning different things, you know, different things like prayer, fasting, different things. And guess what the voice said? No, you did not get that large until a prophet came to you and prayed over your life. He says, you did not get that large until a prophet came and prayed over your life. I woke up out of that dream with that revelation. He got big like that because a prophet came to him. And then when I wake up from dreams like that, I start to study. It leads me on a quest to study revelation in an area. And that's when it began to come to me very clear. It came to me very clear. I noticed that before David got big, at the age of 17, God sends Samuel over him to pray and prophesy over him. Do y'all see that? Every man or woman who got big in the, in the Bible, a prophet was sent to their life. Y'all not hearing it. Y'all not hearing it. And not only at the end of that dream, the Lord said to me, he said, the prophet has a supernatural prayer ministry. So the first top sign and wonder of a prophet is their prayer ministry. It's a prayer ministry. If a prophet prays and prophesies over you, it releases you into destiny. Are you hearing me? That's how he, it ain't just, oh, they interceded for me and we on our prayer line every week and we pray. No, no. They have a supernatural authority in prayer. That only God recognizes. And even if you have your mama and her brother and her sister and all them praying for you every day, if they ain't a prophet, they, they are not going to release what a prophet can over. Their prayers will, will protect and maybe guide you, but it won't, watch this, it won't break you into destiny. Okay? You, 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 I, I, could, I could tell some of y'all don't believe me, so I'm, I'm going to show you this. So, let, let me show you this. How many believe Job was a prophet? Turn with me to Job real quickly. Job 42. I can tell you almost every man who is on the scene very big in the ministry today, they were around prophets when they were in their small stages and God sent a prophet to prophesy over them and release them into destiny. And this thing happens years before 
And so a lot of people get caught up in, well, this and this happened in between and that's how I got there. No, really, it was the prayer of a prophet that you met when you were 17 and they prayed over your life and, and, and something came on you from that day forward. And that something that came on you from God is what pioneered you into what you have. You, you may want to give all the credit to, well, this person opened the door for me and this person did this. Well, you know, really, it's when God sent a prophet to you. The divine reason is because God sent a prophet to you. Are y'all hearing me here? But because we don't know supernatural ministry and the signs and wonders of the office of the prophet, we don't give them the honor we should. That's why whatever prophet prophesied over your life when you were young or God sent them to you and put them in your life, and release you into destiny, you should always honor them. Samuel released Saul into destiny, and he released David into destiny. Samuel released Saul and David. David got big because of the prayer life of Samuel with God. His office as the prophet. You, you say, how you say it? God told Samuel, go to Jesse's house, the Bethlehemite, and he says, there I provided me a king among his sons. I want you to anoint him with the horn of oil. That's right, the horn of oil. That's why David's whole life was symbolic of blessings, why Saul's was symbolic of, of judgment. Saul was anointed with the vial. I've taught on that. And David with the horn. Whenever vows are mentioned in the Bible, it's a symbol of judgment. When God pours out judgment on the earth in Revelation, he says, pour out the vials. Not horns. A horn is a symbolic of blessing. So even Saul's inauguration was symbolic of judgment. He's going to be judged at the end of his life. Lift your hands and say, God, I don't want to be anointed with a vial. Anoint me with the horn of oil. Are y'all hearing this here? Are y'all hearing this? So a prayer ministry. Say with me, a prayer ministry. Say it one more time. But it's not just, a, it ain't just a regular intercession. It's a supernatural authority to release you into something. Amen? And the, and the sad thing about it is once the prophet pray for someone, they always forget about him most of the time. That's bad. I remember those who bless my life. I remember those who, who bless me. Amen? You should too. Job 42, let me show it to you. I'm going to give you one, give you this example. I'm going to show you how, watch this. You can be close to God, no matter how close you are to God. If you don't submit to his, let me say it like this. I learned that God has set up a supernatural system spiritually that before he passed anything to the gate to destiny, he sends a prophet to anoint you and pray over you. Does that make sense? It don't matter how great you are. You have to pass through the office of the prophet. You say, where do you get that from? Even in the New Testament, Jesus could not start his ministry and it could not grow big in fame until he submitted to John the Baptist. John said, I'm greater than you. But Jesus says, all righteousness must be fulfilled. The righteousness of what? The divine law that everything must pass through God's order of the prophet. What, 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 do, what do it say? Uh, what, what, what do it say? When Jesus came to John, he says, I'm not worthy to be baptized, to baptize you. For you are greater than I. But Jesus says, all righteousness must be fulfilled. The Bible says there was a man who was sent from God whose name was John. Right? He was sent from who? Now we know God is greater than Jesus. So the point is, if God sends a prophet and Jesus is on earth and he wants to do God's will, he must also acknowledge that person who God has sent. Do that make sense? He says all righteousness must be fulfilled. Even Jesus showed us that his real ministry couldn't blow up until he passed through John. John had to pray over him. You may say, well, he just baptized him. That wasn't prayer. Any manifestation that God sent a prophet on the scene with is his prayer. Whether he's blowing on you, 
whether he's throwing a rug on you, whether he's putting water on you, whether he takes a wig and throw it at you, uh, I don't know, or mascara, whatever it is. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I'm just saying that's prayer to God, prayer, manifestation, supernatural. Whatever God sends him on the scene with, it's wrapped up in a prayer. And God acknowledges it, and I want to show it to you right now. With Job, he was a prophet, and I want to show you this. Uh, uh, here it is. No, I got to start in verse 7. And it was, start in verse 7, Job 42 and 7. Job 42 and 7. Now, why it says, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto who, Job? The Lord said to who? Eliphaz, the, the Timonite, my wrath is kindled against thee. And against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt what? Offering. And my servant Job shall what? Pray for you. He shall do what? God tells other people to go and be prayed for by Job. Because he assigns the prophet a special privilege that before God honors anything he's going to do in your destiny, you got to have a prophet pray over you. Even God tells these men who knew him, these are holy men, but they were wrong. And God says, you need to go to Job and let him pray for you. You see that? For him, watch this, for him will I what? Accept. At least I deal with you after your what? Folly. Do you not know the intercession of some people's prayers with God can save you from heartache and judgment? There are some things that you wouldn't go through if you was around prophetic people. If you were around people who God accept. Are y'all hearing this here? God says, I'll stop judgment if you... I'm going to show you how this is prophetic. Because God did the same thing with Abraham. When Abimelech took Abraham's wife and, and he says, but he lied to me and told me this was his sister. And God said, I know. And you have integrity. And you didn't touch her because I didn't allow you because of your integrity. He says, but still, if you don't let him pray for you and your house, for he is a prophet, he says, all of you are going to die. He says, but God, it was his fault. God says, you're all going to die. The prophet made a mistake, God. You all going to die. You still got to get prayed for by him. This shows right here that even if you feel a prophet has made a mistake or you know some problem in his life or something like that, if you dishonor those people and God has put this kind of authority on them, just because you think you have some on them that's wrong, you're going to be in trouble because God ain't going to change his orders. You can't disrespect who God honors. Listen, Nor was caught. Caught having homosexual relations when he was drunk with somebody. And one of those guys walked in on him. And he was a patriotical prophet. He wasn't just uh, even a normal prophet. He was a patriotical one. They walked in on him. And believe me, I, don't, I hate that homosexual spirit to death. And I'm not justifying him, but I am saying that when they walked in him, then try to go spread his business out and uncover his nakedness to other people. When Noah got sober and he was in that office, when the spirit came on him, he says, you're going to be judged for the rest of your life. And to this day, that person who did that is judged. That whole generation, to this day, only Jesus' blood can break that. Because when a prophet pronounces judgment against you when God allows judgment to be pronounced against you for, for betraying a prophet or a leader like that he gonna get you I don't care what nobody say he gonna get you they can say whatever they want he gonna get you listen to what God say you all have been speaking folly against Job and you haven't said the thing like he has said right he says I want you to go and let him pray for you First of all, you're talking against him. Now I'm going to make you go submit to him so he can pray for you. And the thing that's going to get on you ain't going to get off you until you go to him and let him pray for you. I'll show you about gossipers, people who want to gossip about other people. I guarantee you, your, your next level is going to be in their hands. 
and, and, and especially if they're prophets. And if you do not repent of the gossip, you will not get into your destiny. Anyway, I, I'm going to say, I, I'm telling you the truth. Here it is right here. God says, I know these people in America don't want to hear that kind of stuff because they want to be, they want, I want to be free. I can do whatever I want. I know God too. God does not break rank. And when you break it, he will not break it. When God sets order, he keeps that order. I don't care how much you want to say, well, he came to me last night. and all that. He don't care about that. Amen. God told Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that what? Ain't Cain had a curse on him and he still could go all around the world. Oh, remember that. You, you see that? So here it is. They're speaking against him. And I'm going to show this to you. It says, for him will I accept least I deal with you after you folly, that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right like my servant Job. So Eliphaz and Temanite and Bilidad and Shuhite and Shohar and Haaminite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. They were humble enough to say, you know, we've been gossiping, we're wrong. We need to go to him and let him pray for us. It says, the Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Watch this. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I get that revelation. Turn with me to Genesis. I'm going to show you another one. Are y'all learning something? Some of y'all said, we're going too long. Now, when prophecy start, you read it. You want to keep that going all day. You got to hear teaching. Because if you don't, you won't be prepared for what's coming. Amen. I'm trying to make you ready. Amen. You got to be ready. But some of you need to see it. Genesis 20, verse 1. Watch this. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Sur and Sojourn in Jigar. And you know the story. He said, this woman is my wife because he was afraid. And God skipped down to six and, the, and God said unto him in a dream, this is King Abimelech. Uh, when Abraham was passing through his, his country and Abraham was afraid that he was going to get killed because his wife was so beautiful. So he said, let's just say you're my sister. And so the king took her because he thought he was his sister and was going to mate with her. And then listen, and God said six unto him. Well, first of all, three, it says, and God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. Let's start at verse three, uh, chapter 20. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Have you ever noticed God didn't go to him in a dream and say, my prophet was wrong. And he, he told you a story. <laughs> And, and, and whatever. How do God just go saying, you know, you're going to die? Because God don't break rank. Even if his servants are wrong, he will deal with them. You understand what, what I'm saying? But he don't break rank. God was just letting them know that if you don't give up his wife, then basically you, you're going to die. And so skip down to six. And God said unto him in a dream... Yeah, I, and he, let me say what he said. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my, my sister. And she even herself, she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. I want to, I hear a word right here, right now for this. I believe God is a righteous God, and I believe he is a holy God, and I believe in holiness, I believe in righteousness. But you cannot expend one for the other. In other words, you cannot be so holy and integral against God's prophets that you cross their rank and you touch their coat. God do not allow that. God knew his servant said these things, and she said it, but God tells him, you're going to die. Do you see that? And God admits, he says, you are integral. You are living right. You are innocent in this thing. He says, but still, 
you are not innocent in the sense of rank. He is a prophet. I'm assured to you. What God specifically tells him, for he is a prophet, you have to honor him. In spite of what he's done, you got to honor him. I'm not going to change that. How is God telling the man that he's going to die and he's walked in integrity? But you know how many church people I see do that stuff all the time? We integral, we holy, we, we know, and they want to point fingers at other leaders. You do that to a prophet, God going to get you. Because he don't care how holy and how innocent your hands are, you have just corrupted yourself by disrespecting their office. You need their prayer. Whether you want to admit it or not, you need it. Are you hearing this here? Now listen, I, I want to show you how God dealt with this man because, come on, let's be honest. In the American mindset, how many of you, how many of you know we, we know God is always right, but it looked like God ain't right right here. <laughs> come on, let's be honest. Can we talk for real? <laughs> it don't look like God is right right here. This don't look right. Come on, come on let's just be honest. God knew from the beginning what happened. He comes to him first and said, you're going to die. <laughs> you're a dead man. You tell Americans this kind of stuff, they get mad at God, turn on him. You ain't right, God, because they have this holy, righteous thing in their life that is killing them all the time. I'm trying to tell you that righteousness and innocency does, God does not, when it comes to rank and it comes to positions and things like that, you cannot cross. No matter how righteous you think you are compared to the prophet. He going to get you. What it says, even wives, when you're with a husband who don't even obey the word, he don't know the word, he don't obey the words. It says you are to submit and be quiet. Don't even try to preach the word to him. That ain't your place. Because God honors rank. The husband is the head of the wife. I know they teach in America, well, we're side by side. I'm not a doormat. No, you're not a doormat. But the word submit in the Greek means to rank under. In an army, everybody don't have the same rank. In a marriage, everybody don't have the same rank. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband. The word submit means to rank under. Are you hearing this here? And I get so tired of seeing women who are Jezebels to their husbands and then seeing husbands who are Ahabs, they can't even stand up. I, how are you going to lead your house and be the commander and your wife rank under you when she is leading you? Man, I, I, I'm, t I'm so sick of that stuff in America because you know they have exalted women in America. I mean, unrighteously. I know some have been done wrong, and I don't believe in being a male chauvinist, but I'm serious. They keep making men look stupid in America on all these commercials. I'm sick of that foolishness. It's disrespect toward men. Amen? That stuff is not right. Amen? It's wrong. In the court systems, they give most of the women everything. It's disrespectful. It's the way our country is built. Amen, hallelujah. And it's built off of the masters and the leaders of our country. Amen. In the Caucasian culture. And I say that with great reverence and love because y'all know I'm, I'm multicultural here. I'm not prejudiced. I believe in all nations. But I also study the weaknesses in different cultures. And one of the weaknesses of the masters of the American race because it's the Caucasian culture who built this, this nation. Amen which they did a great job. I thank God for them. They are strong builders, beautiful business leaders. They know how to colonize and organize. I, I'm so thankful for my Caucasian sons and our Caucasian forefathers in America. They built a lot in this country, amen? I See, I don't get with that religious group and that racist group in our black culture say, oh, the white man. I, I ain't into that stuff, you understand? I see the beauty in every culture. But I also understand the weaknesses of the, those cultures. And one of the weaknesses in the Caucasian cultures, they let, most of the time, they let their wives run them. They do. They let their wives run the house. They do the business, but they won't lead the house. The Bible said about Abraham, I know him, that he will command his house. God wants you to command your house. 
Your wife shouldn't have you in the corner making you do what she wants you to do. You're nothing but a puppy dog. You might as well build a little dog house outside the house. Are y'all hearing me? I'm saying, I've watched this stuff. And this is why, and, and my Caucasian sons, they know me. They know I love them. That's why I can preach like this. I hit racism. I don't care. Amen. I don't hide nothing. Amen. When you stand before Jesus, you got to give account for this kind of stuff. But I, I want different cultures to get free. Not only them, but our, my own blacks and Asians and other people who have these problems. You need to understand where your problems are. But one thing I've noticed, the reason why the women are given so much power in America, because the Caucasian culture does that. They have done that. They have set up the system in America. That system is wrong. Now, I don't believe in men beating their wives and doing all this stuff. There got to be rules and order against that. I'm just saying, I'm going to get off that right now. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. I hope you got it right Come on, somebody say hallelujah. I mean, I don't agree. I know in our culture, in the blacks, you see a lot of abuse. I'm not saying it's not in the Caucasian culture, but it's a lot in the black culture too. Men abusing wives and stuff like that. But one thing you're not going to really see in the black culture is a woman running her husband. Not on the majority scale. There's still some who do it. Now, I, I talk to them. They are jack, jack legs too. Amen. Because they are adopting that, that Caucasian culture stuff that they're doing in America. You don't do that. Amen. God sets an order and we must keep it and he don't break rank. Do y'all understand that? It ain't about if you're black or white. Listen, if you are a husband and your wife is running you, you are Ahab. God is angry at Jezebel and he's angry at you. Do you understand that? You got to get the thing in order. Amen. God told Abraham, I, I'm going to bring upon Abraham everything I said. Watch this. Because he commands his house. God will not fulfill your destiny. One, one, you write this down. This is important. And I don't have time to show you, but research this in the word. But one of the destiny killers and stillers is when a man don't command his house. When you don't command your house, God will not bring upon you everything that has been said about you. Amen. Weak men. That's not, that's not what God is called. And, and we ain't raising up no weak guys here. Amen? Amen? We're raising up real men who know how to be loving kings and meek and humble in their heart like Jesus is. And when they get a wife, they're going to treat her good too. Amen? Amen? We're raising up wonderful daughters here. Amen? Who are going to be beautiful to their husband and know how to submit. Amen? And follow. And also offer advice when they need to. Not because they can Amen. Now we're talking about marriage and stuff, and I don't know how we got into that. Are y'all hearing me here? Oh, my goodness. What are y'all doing to me? This is, and God said unto him in the dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I withheld thee from sinning against me, that thou, and suffered I not to touch, suffer I thee not to touch her. Now read seven with me. This is the key. Read what he says. Now, therefore, restore the man his what? wife for he is a come on for he is a for he is a the whole reason why God went down this whole road he says because you're breaking rank with a prophet I don't care what he told you I've set an order in the earth and I put my prophets there and you just happen to be in the wrong circumstances he got you in it but you still need to respect and honor him for he is a prophet read Listen to the next thing God say. And he shall pray for thee. Wait a minute. God is talking to this man directly. Why can't he just do it right there? Why do you have to say, you need to go to him and let him pray for you? Wait, you are God. He, he got to go to you. You coming to me talking now. Why have to go to him? Because God has set an order in the earth. He has given prophets a supernatural prayer ministry. And he will not honor you until you go to them. I don't care what relationship you say you have with God. And God spoke to me. He spoke to Abimelech too. But that did not negate him submitting to a prophet. And so when a prophet prays for you, he releases you into destiny. Are y'all learning something? For he is a prophet and he shall pray for you. 
Are y'all getting it? See that? He shall pray for thee and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all thy house. Eight. Therefore, Abimelech rose early what? And called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. Do you see that? He got up early because God speaks in those dreams very early. He got up. That stuff was on his mind. I don't want to die. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all getting the revelation? Why did God talk directly with this man and then say, go to Abraham to let him pray for you? The almighty, he's already almighty. He could do whatever he want. Why he have to send you to somebody else that keeps pride out of you? You know how many people I've said, God has spoken to me too. I got a prayer life with him. He speaks to me too, but he has rank. You have to submit to who he has sent. But spiritual pride makes you like that. Makes you arrogant. Makes you think your relationship trumps rank. And all you're going to get is judgment. He's going to get you. Y'all know I keep telling people that. He's going to get you. You're not going to get away. God told him, surely know this. You will die and your household. All of you. I know he's wrong, but you're going to die. That's how serious God takes rank. You can say whatever you want. They wrong. They don't understand me. Maybe they don't, but you don't disrespect and you don't dishonor. Because when you do, he's going to get you. You're not going to escape. So when I saw that dream about Carton and I learned how his ministry got big, it wasn't all the doors that opened afterwards. It was when a prophet prayed over his life when he was small. I'm going to show you one more. Come on. Are y'all learning, are y'all learning something? Acts 13. Ready? Acts 13. And one, watch this. Watch this. That's why when we call prophetic gatherings here, you should be here. You should be here. Because all kind of supernatural stuff is happening. Stuff you can't even see for your future. Amen? And I don't care how hard it is for you now. You get around this kind of stuff, God going to make sure you come out all right. Acts 13 and one. A lot of people say, well, you got all that Old Testament stuff. You ain't seen no New Testament stuff. A little sloth mouth. All right, but we're, we'll keep going. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. When you get it, would you say amen? Listen to what it says. Now there were in what? The church that was at Antonach, certain what? Prophets. So we see there were a lot of prophets are gathered, right? And what? Teachers. I mean, Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which has been brought up with Herod the Terror and Saul. To read, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I've called them to. Three, read, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Uh Uh-oh. And so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed. So here it is. You got to remember before this, Paul's ministry was nothing. After he was at Antonach with a lot of prophets and they prayed and fasted and laid hands on them and sent them forth, Paul's ministry exploded. It is directly related to the prophets that were laying hands and praying for them. I had never seen this in my life until I had a dream. 
And then the Lord started to remind me. He says, David, you remember how you prayed for this pastor and their ministry has grown and exploded? He said, that was the operation of the prophetic office. The people I sent to your life, you pray for them and they are successful. Are y'all hearing me? He just started to name people who's been successful in ministry or business. He says, I sent them to you for you to pray for them. That was your prophetic ministry. He says, remember that old lady in Bishop G. Patterson's church? I used to go to Bishop G. How many remember Bishop G. Patterson? Come on, BT every morning. That was my bishop for 20 years before he died. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget when I first started, I was moving in so many strong signs and wonders as a prophet. I was more went by prophet uh, doing prophetic ministry and and some of the people at the temple at Bountiful Blessings there at Bishop's Church would be in my meetings. And uh, there was an older mother, a lady, who, who was coming to the meetings. We were seeing legs grow out, all kind of stuff, happening, signs and wonders. And uh, she would be introducing me because she was at the temple longer. She would say, this is, this is a young prophet. God has given him a, a prayer ministry. He says, right then I was trying to teach you that you had a prayer ministry. But I, I, I didn't catch it. I just looked at prayer ministry as, oh, the 21st century. Oh, they pray for me. They intercede. No, no. It's in the office. In the office of the prophet, there's a God requires certain, for certain things to happen in your life, he requires you to go to the prophet. It's just his way. I, I can't, even Paul had to do it. David had to do it. Saul had to do it. Jesus had to do it. So don't ever take the presence of a true prophet lightly. When you're in their presence and they lay hands on you to pray, you need to be ready. You need to accept that. Amen? Come on, give God the glory. When someone is prophesying, they're also praying. Did you know that? Because that gift has been birthed out of a prayer life. God looks at it as a prayer. He looks at it as a request to fulfill. To be, to be done. Amen. Are you hearing this here? And he started telling me, this is what's about to happen. And this is what's going to take place with you. Whatever. You understand the reason why I was in, in the spirit and in tears? Because I know this. Because when God sent a prophet to pray over you, they release you into destiny. And you can't be so arrogant and think, oh, I, I, I think my office is greater. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It has to do with God using them and their signs and wonders. And that's why I want to say to apostles, because, because we are first don't mean we can disrespect the ranks of others. I've seen a lot of apostles get in pride. Well, I'm the apostle. I don't need no prophet. I'm one myself. David was an apostle, but he needed Samuel. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Well, I'm the king. He needed Nathan. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Just because you may be greater in rank or first in the, in the order of things don't mean God gives you the right to dishonor other things he set in place. Pride deceives you and make you think like that. Do, do you see that? People do it all the time. I, I've watched they get beside themselves. Don't let God give them something. They can't listen to nobody. Something wrong with that, amen? Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me right now. Can you imagine if Jesus was like that? Just imagine if Jesus was like that. Can you imagine Jesus being like that? John, I'm greater than you. I can't, I'm, I'm not passing through you. You're not going to baptize me. He was humble and he submitted. He was greater than John the Baptist, but he submitted. Do y'all understand that? Don't let pride blind you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, teach me. Are y'all learning something? So I've only given you one sign and wonder, haven't I? So now I got to give you all 10 of them fast and you got to do your own study. Amen. Can I go and give you the 10 signs and wonders, top signs and wonders of a prophet? The, the biggest thing I gave you is their prayer life, their prayer ministry. If they come to you and pray over your life, something is going to happen. I see thousands of people I've prayed over over the years. They, they're so blessed, but they're so arrogant. A lot of them have turned against me. They don't know that they got there because God sent me to pray for them. I know who I am. I'm not being arrogant. I'm not taking the glory. But the, the scriptures are clear here in the Old and New Testament that God honors the prayer of a prophet. 
and he will send you to them. And in order for your life to be blessed and increase, you need them in your life. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Even the prophets needed prophets. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. God is required. Jesus was a prophet, was he not? Jesus the prophet needed a prophet. So you got to remember that. You are not immune to the government of God. You are not immune, no matter what rank you hold, to the order of God. Does that make sense? Look at your neighbor and say, we need a prophet in our life. Come on, say it again. I, 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 I tell you what, when, when you need, to, when you in a, like a, a, a stuck or a rut place, and, and you need to be thrust into destiny, get a prophet to come around you. I know what God has said is going to come to pass. Jesus already told me that himself. But while you're on the earth and while you're going through things, you need the strength on earth. Come on, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's already settled in heaven about me. You understand? But on earth, you need that same agreement down here. Heaven and earth agreement is called. You got to get somebody down here that can agree with you. Amen? Somebody say hallelujah. So let me give you the 10 real quick and the other nine because now I didn't wasted all my time talking to you about the prayer, but I'm telling you that came to me by divine revelation. Whoever teaches that the prayer ministry of a prophet is supernatural. You don't hear nobody teaching that. That's how I know the things I teach are given me divinely by God. I was given that in a dream. And I can tell you right now, any man or woman doing anything for God supernaturally, packing out arenas, whoever they are, it was a prophet who came and spoke over their life that released them into that. And I don't care if it came 20 years early. Amen? It still came through them. Somebody say hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Somebody. Signs and wonders. One of the top signs and wonders of the prophet is prosperity. Prosperity. Or the supernatural ability to release I don't want to say money because prosperity is not just money. Prosperity is any breakthrough of increase. You understand what I'm saying? Any breakthrough of increase. But when it says, and so shall you prosper, prosperity don't just have to do you're going to get a lot of money. Prosperity can be where you not have a success in your book, it ain't prosperous. Now when a prophet comes around, your book becomes prosperous. Do that make sense? And it brings in the money, you understand? You, you, you may not have connections. A prophet come around you, you're not prosperous, and then all of a sudden you start having connections and get prosperous. Getting opportunities. Do that make sense? I remember when Prophet Kim came in. I sat right here on the front row. We were in a service with him. He came and prophesied me about a book. I was writing face to face at that time. He prophesied over me about the book right then. The book became prosperous. I can attribute that to the ministry of a prophet. Come on, are y'all hearing this? Here? Yeah, it came through my obedience and, and obeying Jesus when he came to me in a dream. But still, he sent a prophet to confirm. He passes everything through the voice. Come on, he uses a voice. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. So, so prosperity, uh, uh, see, I, I, I can't see. If I do this, then it will limit God's will. I, I can't do that. I can't just say money. Because the Bible says, uh, God blessed Potiphar's house for Joseph's sake. And we know that Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was a slave. But it says he was a prosperous man. How are you a prosperous man and, and, and you a slave? You ain't got no money in your pocket because he didn't. But prosperity is a supernatural substance that get into anything and make it increase. Do that make sense? So Joseph was a prosperous man. When he went to Pharaoh's house or Potiphar's house, everything it, the Bible says that Potiphar had in the field and in the house increased. Money came in abundantly because prosperity, to call it money, is so limited. Money is involved, but it ain't everything. So real, the real spirit of prosperity, so it says believe God's pro prophets and so shall you prosper. It didn't say so shall you just get money because that's a limitation. 
If you prosper, money going to come automatically. If your book is not prosperous, you ain't going to get no money. But if your book becomes prosperous, money going to come with it. Someone say prosperity. One more time. Believe in his prophets and so shall you profit. Out of all the ministry offices, Jesus never said, if you give, if you give a pastor a cold glass of water to drink, you shall not, what, lose your reward. You don't hear it. You give an evangelist a cold glass of water, lose your reward. A teacher. He never mentions none of the other offices. But the prophet, if you give a prophet a cold glass of water, you shall not lose your what? Reward. Do you see that? Because God has put in the prophet's ministry and life rewards. You get rewards for honoring them. Amen? Every time somebody bless me with a car or suit or, or something like that, God blesses them. This lady right now who's all over CNN and CBS and NBC and ABC, who's making headlines, who was just in Indiana. You know, she was she was really basically not prosper. Not, I mean, she wasn't just broke. She she sold ten thousand dollars into my life as a prophet in Indiana just this year. And God had me to give her a word. I gave her a word. I said, God is showing me that you have a voice. There's there's something huge that's going to happen for you. Your CD. God had me to pray for. Her. She's going to come here and give her testimony. I said, but God had me to pray for her, but she wasn't prosperous. I, I think the $10,000 was kind of the last she had. But she sold, she, she first gave $2,000. She says, God told me to give ten. She gave eight more. And when she sold the money, even without me knowing it, my heart opened to give her more words. I don't know how to say that because I don't believe in prophesying because people bring me money. But God knows in the spirit that when people sow, he'll open your heart to give more to them. There's a scripture that says, let us go to the prophet, but let us not go without a gift so he can show us what God wants us to do. It's like you always, you come before the prophet with a gift. Do you understand? And that gift will make the heavens open that gift up in them to you. Do, do that make sense? And of course, God used me in name so strongly in many places at different times. And, and as, as a prophet. But when she did that, God just opened it up. And he started to have me to tell her, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be all over the media it's going to happen. And then I told her two names. I said, these are the names of the two judges that's going to promote you. And I gave her the two names. She said, I don't know them. Well, two days passed by. She had to go stand in front of the judges and that's what their names were. Both of their names was that. And now she's everywhere. She has her, I mean, it's just big. It's amazing what's happening. But in that move of God in Indiana, that, that's what happened. Are y'all hearing me? And she get up and testify. She says, she says, this prophet, now that I've broken through into all of this, y'all saw it happen. But y'all know he first called my name because I called her name. I didn't know her name, but God told me her name. And I said, this is what God is saying. And I said, these are the names of the two judges. Well, it really happened. The first part happened. And then after she sold 10,000, God gave me the names of the judges. And now they promoted her. She's everywhere. Millions of dollars coming to her now. Didn't have nothing. She said, this 10000 is a sacrifice. Now she has millions. She's prosperous in what she's doing. Lift your hands and say, Lord, teach me. Let's see the signs and wonders of a problem. Y'all got it double yesterday morning. God had two prophets on y'all. <laughs> That's how I know. You're going to come into so much prosperity, you have no idea. So much. But one of the second major signs and wonders of a prophet, I can't say just money because it ain't limited money. It's prosperity. Number three, the signs and wonders of a prophet is miracles. A miracle ministry. God gives prophets a miracle ministry and a healing ministry. A miracle ministry and a healing ministry. God told Abraham, pray for their house, and all of them were healed. 
It says one of the house, they were sick, and Abraham prayed and they were healed. So prophets are also given healing ministries and miracle ministries. We know Elijah had a miracle ministry to raise the dead, did he not? Elisha, they were prophets. They had a miracle ministry. Amen? All right? So the signs and wonders of a prophet. All right? Four. You ready for this one? Just say, put on your, put on this next dash. He gives them the supernatural ability to see, know, and proclaim the future. They can tell you what's coming next. The ability to speak direction and instruction for the future. The ability to see, know, discern, and speak the future. You know how huge that is? And, and I've seen some prophets, they can tell you what's about to happen in just the next two minutes. I was sitting at one table with a prophet and his ability of sight was nearsighted. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't use nearsighted and farsighted like the doctors do. Nearsighted to them mean long distance. Farsighted means short distance. To me, nearsighted means near distance. Long sight means long distance. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know where they get that from, but I understand their, their, their uh, situation. Maybe that's just the kingdom side of me. <laughs> but uh, he's a nearsighted prophet. And this is another thing you must discern what kind of prophet you send around and what is the range of their eyes. I teach all prophets this. You must let God gauge and range your eyesight just prophetically because he gives different prophets sight in different ranges. So I teach them how to home in on their sight, their ear, their hearing. How, how, how is your hearing? Long distance or near? Most prophets, they see stuff way in the future. Daniel hardly ever dreamed or heard about anything present. <laughs> hardly ever. Most of his stuff was in the future and it was eternity. It was far distance. You understand what I'm saying? But some prophets have near sight, near sight, near hearing, near sight, long sight. You got to know which, what their range are. And I teach prophets, God will show you your range. How strong are your eyes? How far do they see? I was sitting with one prophet and we were just somewhere and uh, we were out eating. And, um, and of course, we were, we were, like in a corner where you couldn't see the waiter come around. But he just said to me, uh, the, the, the waitress is about to bring a cup of milk to us right now. Because <laughs> he had asked for it. And we had been sitting there for some time wondering where, where it is. And we, were just, we just forgot about it and just kept talking. And then he said, I just saw a vision. You're about to do it. And then all of a sudden, come around the corner and put the miracle on the table. Just nearsighted. You understand? Nearsighted. Uh, then you got those who are farsighted. <clears throat> do you understand? It's important to know that. They can tell you what's coming next. They are proactive. Amen? <clears throat> they know what's happening. Number five. That's four, right? I'm giving y'all. What is that? Is that is that six? That was four? This is five? Oh my God, I can't I can't I I can't I can't believe I'm I'm on number five. <laughs> we got ten to go. All right. Are y'all learning something? Okay. So here go number five. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Prophets have the ability, the supernatural ability, watch this, to know the secrets of men's hearts. The secrets of men's hearts. Now, you got to understand how major that ability is because it says only God knows men's what? That's right. And if only he knows that, if he gives that ability to a prophet, it says, thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. Do you see that? 
if he gives that to somebody that's special. Because he reserves the heart for himself. God looketh on the heart. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. That's right. So that's a God ability. It's supernatural. So that means you say, what are you talking about? How did that operate? When Jesus said, Jesus told, chose 12 disciples, but he knew who would betray him. In other words, they can walk past you and know what you're going to do in the future because they see what's in your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mostly everybody who's betrayed here, I had dreams about it and I told them about it. If I come to you and tell you I had a dream that you were a traitor, you're a traitor if you don't repent. And they always say, oh, I love you. I ain't got nothing. No, I see the future. When I remember when I first started telling them, they didn't want to listen. Oh, that's, that's wrong. I love you, apostle. I, God has shown me this so you can change. Amen? You don't have to be one, but that's one of the supernatural abilities a prophet could tell you what's in your heart before you ever do it. Do you really think, do you really think Judas was like that in the beginning? It says Jesus knew in the beginning who would betray him. He didn't say he was like that in the beginning. To show you that he wasn't really like that in the beginning, he wept and cried after he did what he did. That showed it was some part of true humanness there that didn't, didn't really have that for Jesus like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? But he fell into the trap of the devil. You don't ever have to betray anybody. I don't care what nobody say. There's a way to do things. You don't, you don't have to be like that. Amen? A prophet can tell you what your real heart is, your ability. Do y'all understand? Everybody who's ever betrayed me, I just, I've always had this gift where I'll dream or somebody around me will dream about the people in my circle and I'll know what they're going to do. I just know. Amen? So they have the gift of the secrets, knowing the secrets of men's hearts. Things that are in there that nobody, you, nobody can know. Only God knows. It says he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the what? Prophets. That means the secrets in men's hearts too. Are y'all hearing me? here? All right. That's the secrets of hearts. Now I'm going to deal with number six. Is that, was that five? Number six, it says, he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. They not only know the secrets of men's hearts, they are given the secrets to God's heart. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Secrets. If I would sum both of these up and put one title on both of these numbers, I would call it, given the supernatural ability from God to know secrets. In the heart of God and the heart of man. But I would call it something else, though. Secrets. Someone say secrets. And I'm telling, I'm teaching this for younger prophets who, who, are, who, are, who are here or who have learned. You need to understand, when you know your abilities, then you can tap into these things. Amen? The secrets of men's hearts, the secrets of God's hearts. He revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. What secrets? They just think, oh, it's just mysteries. Oh, it's just uh, a revelatory word. No, no. Those secrets come out of God's heart. Are y'all hearing me? Prophets are trusted with secrets. That's their supernatural gifting is to be trusted with secrets. So watch this. When you have an immature prophet being raised up and God is showing them dreams and he's showing them about people's behavior, and then they go to other people gossiping about it, that's bad. That prophet is limiting themselves from God ever trusting them. Do y'all understand? And then they will be weak with secrets. You'll notice God won't give them secrets because he starts testing you early to see how you can keep your mouth shut. And if you can't keep your mouth shut, then he can't trust you with information. Well, you know, I had this dream about her child. 
uh, God is confiding in you about your sister or brother or something wrong. And he wants you to pray for them and cover them in love, but you want to go gossip about them in the name of intercession. <laughs> That's what they covered up with. Intercession. It's just basically another way to gossip. That's how the church, they just cover it up real nicely, you know. <laughs> but you be around Jesus, you see through all that stuff. It's all lies. <laughs> it's all lies. They just can't be trusted. They got a big mouth. They don't know how to, they're a loose bucket. They don't know how to be quiet. <laughs> Amen. One of the strengths of a prophet is to talk. One of the weaknesses of a prophet is to talk. <laughs> Y'all missed that, didn't you? <laughs> but you, you see, immature, they don't know how to be quiet. You got people who think they got to tell everything. We got to expose them in the name of the Lord. You devil. That's what you are. You're a devil. You're trying to destroy somebody. Amen. Because you offended and you mad. Amen. Just, just be honest about it. Number seven. That was six. The signs and wonders of a prophet. They are gap standers. Gap standards. They have the supernatural ability. Listen to this. They have the supernatural ability to be a ransom in the eyes of God for a nation, a people, or a circumstance. He says, I look for a man who would stand in the gap to make up the what? Hedge. In other words, they are a breach. They are, they, are the, they are the gap standard or like where there's a breach, God can put them there to keep out something or to keep in something. But I call them gap standards. They are ransoms. God said, I look for men who could fill in the gap to make up the hedge. <clears throat> so, so in other words, he chooses them to be gap standards. It is a supernatural ability by which God bargains and he ransoms his judgment against the person. Before he brings judgment, he, he uses a prophet. That's why people don't understand the loving, our loving father when he sends a prophet, how much that's love. But we look at the prophet and he's pointing fingers at our sin and what are, what are we doing. Do you understand his whole presence there is to be a protection? It's to be God sent them because he's trying to stop judgment. They're a gap stander. It's the supernatural ability to stand in a place before God to bargain and to ransom to keep bad things from happening. You see how important it is? All right. <laughs> Y'all ready for the other one? That was number seven, right? Number eight. God told Elijah, you, thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war. Prophets are a supernatural instrument of warfare in God's hands. A supernatural instrument of warfare in God's hands. A supernatural instrument of warfare in God's hands. Number Eight. I don't have time to get into all that, but it's, 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 it's so, this is so extensive. Are y'all learning something? Y'all ready? Prophets are supernatural intercessors. Supernatural. I, I would really put that with gap standards, but it's not quite the same because the gap, uh, so hard. But when God came to Abraham, he came to him as a prophet to bargain with him about Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, before I do anything, I'm going to go to Abraham and let him. He says, after Abraham finished communing with the Lord, in other words, he was bargaining, saying, if you find 10, then don't do this. And don't. You see, he says, God, God, it says, God will do nothing in the earth. What do Amos say? What did it, what it say? 
God does nothing in the earth. What say it again? Unless he reveals it to his prophets. Reveals it to his prophets. God said, how shall I hide from Abraham this thing I do? Amen. So God don't hide stuff from prophets that he's going to do. So they are gap standers. So intercession, they are intercessors. They are the supernatural friend of God most of the time. Because it says, the servant, the Lord revealeth not what he do, but the, but the, but the what friend, he telleth him all things that he doeth. God revealeth nothing unless he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. But he's, used, he's dealing with a servant like a friend. You see that? Abraham was called the what? You can be a prophet, a servant, and a friend of God. Usually, prophets are able to develop a friendship with God. Amen? It's a supernatural friendship with God. That's what face-to-face is within my life. Are y'all ready? And they prayed over him fasted. They sent him out and it was huge. Paul became huge. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you for this word today. We, we give you praise that you're preparing people's spirit to receive the prophetic ministry. We give you glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. I want you that are watching by live streaming here. Let's give to the Lord. I want you to give God an offering. Now we've been talking about the prophet's ministry. You need to sow something right now. Get an offering out right now. You that are watching by live stream, you that are here, I want you to sow into... I'm telling you, how many of you believe in the accuracy in the prophetic office, the calling? Let me tell you something. It's a special office that we must honor. Amen. Now y'all ready? Because tonight we've already talked about what God is saying about increase. One water, one so, one water, but the other gives, God gives the increase. The supernatural comes together when two come together. You see that? God commands a blessing when there's unity. Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to bless y'all church. He's telling me. He's going to bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. Lift those offerings up. Father, I thank you for this. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus, this offering. Those that are given by live stream, Lord, I pray that you will release wealth upon them. And tonight, those that you are speaking to give in a special way uh, before this office, Lord God, that you will cause the blessing to rest on their destiny, not just in their home, but on their whole future. Because prophets and apostles dominate the future. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Prophets prophesy your future. Apostles dominate, help you to dominate the future. Thank you, God, that you're going to be both those things in their life. And you're going to give them victory in their destiny, in their future. Come on, stand on your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise.